Good day everyone, I hope you all are doing well. In this video we are going to take a closer look at my current GPS setup. This is the setup that I used on this TED trip and it worked really really well. This setup and video will consist of four parts. Number one, the tablet itself. Why I went with this particular tablet versus something like the Carpeter, which is considered to be the top dog in terms of tablet and navigation. Uh, but also why I went with this tablet instead of a designated GPS like a Garmin. The second part of this setup is the holder. Uh, why I went with this holder uh, instead of the other available ones. Third part is how I'm charging the device while I'm riding, how it's connected to the power of the bike. And the fourth and final part of the setup is the apps that I use to navigate. Uh, I use two different apps and I also have the possibility of using this setup as a rally roadbook reader. The main question for most people is should I buy a GPS unit like a Garmin or a TomTom or should I buy an Android device like this one and this is the Samsung Galaxy Active 3 tab and this is not a full detailed comparison between the two systems uh, there's obviously pros and cons to each and it also depends on your use. But for me and what I want my tablet to do, the choice was easy. With a GPS, you are pretty much locked within their world, their rules, their maps. But this is more like a computer. I can download whatever app I want to use. And if someone in the future creates a brilliant navigation app for motorcycling, I can download it and use it on this tab. Uh, we'll talk about more about the apps later in this video. But I have an app that does everything a GPS does. If I just want to be told where the next McDonald's is, I can use this app. I have another app if I want the map to be detailed for off-road riding so I can find cool trails. I have an app for that as well. I can read rally road books on this and I can use this uh, for watching Netflix in the tent at night. All right, so I've decided that I want an Android device and not a GPS. Now, why did I go with the Active 3 tab instead of the Carpe Iter, which is considered to be the gold standard when it comes to tablets used for motorcycle navigation? Well, I compared the two and the Carpe Iter is a really nice tab. Uh, it is also a Samsung tab beneath all the shell. And the main difference uh, is pretty much the screen brightness. The, the carburetor can be a bit brighter than this one, but I didn't have any issues using this in direct sunlight uh, when it was on its brightest setting. So it was really too much of a difference. The carburetor comes with a holder and a charger. So that's kind of the whole package in one. Uh, whereas with this, I had to buy that separate. But the Carpeter new is around 1300 euros uh, for me to get it here in Norway with taxes and everything. And this particular tab I bought used uh, and new it is 500 euros I think. And I spent 250 euros on this very tablet and that just 250 euros versus 1300. It was an easy, easy choice for me. So I decided to go with the Active 3 tab. So there you have the tablet itself. Now let's take a closer look at the holder. And this is uh, the Brodit, B-R-O-D-E-T. Uh, this is a passive holder. And that means that there's no charging pins at the bottom like other versions. I wanted it to be a passive one because I wanted to use my own charging solution. More about that in a second. This holder is actually lockable. It's not the most secure thing in the world but it will buy me a few seconds when someone tries to steal the tab off my bike when I'm in the store. This tablet uh, is really cool because it is not only very sturdy and well built, but it is tiltable or yeah, turnable. So when I decide to attend a rally, I can, I can just turn it like that. And when it's back to navigating home from wherever I've been, it's, as easy as switching apps. The other, ta uh, the other tablet holder that I was looking at uh, is the RAM mounts, which is an active tab. So you could actually charge the tab with pogo pins on the bottom. But uh, I've read a few reviews online and a lot of uh, the users were complaining that in rain or dusty conditions, 
the pogo pins would get uh, dirty and the device wouldn't charge more about that when we talk about the charging situation in the next uh, step of this video really happy with this brolit holder uh, if you are in Norway and want a holder like this, please uh, look up or Google ADV Thor, T-H-O-R, Norwegian guy who sells these. Uh, I'm not connected to him in any ways, but he was a very nice, um, nice seller and answered all my questions that I had about this holder. And uh, it was a, was a nice buying experience. Uh, he also sells these uh, tabs uh, in his online store. With the tablet and holder in place, the next thing that I had to figure out was how to charge it while riding. As previously mentioned, I didn't want an active holder because I've read one too many bad reviews from people using the RAM mounts uh, active holder and even people using the, the gold standard, the Carpe Iter, uh, which uses the pogo pins at the bottom. When it's pouring down with rain or very dusty, uh, their device just didn't charge. So I decided to go with this passive holder and try my own approach. So I ordered uh, a waterproof USB-C cable from Quadlock. And I guess it's nothing fancy about it. It's just extra plastic around where the charging port is. And on this whole TED trip, it worked without any issues. It was really dusty in the beginning of this trip. And then it was just pouring down with rain the last few days. And even when I got sprayed and covered in mud by my dear, Sven, uh, dear friend Sven, I had to wash my bike and I took the water hose and I pointed it there directly at the tablet and the charging port just to see how waterproof this system uh, was. And I didn't have any issues at all. The, the battery or the, the, the cable is uh, hooked up in the tower through uh, active power I guess uh, you can call it so when I turn on the bike the the tablet will get uh, power and be charged uh, and when I'm finished riding for the day I can just turn it off and uh, this cable will not yeah, draw any battery or power from the bike so now we have the tablet the holder and how it's being charged while I'm riding in place now the final and fourth part of this video is the apps that I use when I'm out riding. So the dashboard that you see here is the DMD2 or Drive Mode Dashboard 2. This is made by Thorc Racing in Portugal, the same company that makes the Carpeter. And this is just the home screen. So when I press home, this is where I end up instead of having to navigate through all the Android stuff. So for just pure navigation, getting from A to B, I use an, an app called Usman and it's very, very easy to use, just pop it up, type uh, your, your wanted destination and it will use all the, the satellite signals to find out where you are and, and uh, whatnot. And when it comes to navigating on the trails, like uh, on this TED trip, this uh, app is called Locus Maps. And these are your regular, I think it's called Topo Maps, very detailed, especially for off-road riding if we navigate out to the off-roads as you can see it will show different uh, altitudes and small gravel trails and all the things that you want to know when you are out riding again the rally roadbook holder um, and all these apps uh, you can choose whichever app that you like to use and you can even use uh, Thork Racing's own uh, app or navigation app so it's it's so many different options uh, on an Android device like this. Again, that's why I went with this setup instead of a designated GPS. The, the options are pretty much endless uh, with an Android device. One thing that I forgot to mention with uh, these navigation apps is that no, you don't need internet connection in order for them to work. They use satellite uh, signal which isn't dependent on um, internet connection and the the maps themselves you download them before you head out on your trip so i've downloaded all the the maps for uh, for europe and where i usually ride so i have them and can just navigate my way through wherever i want to go
So there you have my full GPS navigation setup and I actually made a video like this over a year ago, one of the first videos that I posted on this channel. Everything is completely the same besides I used this uh, Samsung phone instead, didn't work really well, it's too small, too slow to, to load the maps and, and use for navigation and I also uh, didn't have a waterproof charging solution. But uh, I now have a lot of experience using an Android device for navigation and in summary it works flawlessly, no complaints, especially now that I have a tablet as big as this and uh, with the tablet itself being waterproof and the charging solution as well. There's one thing missing to this setup that I will add in the future and that is a Bluetooth um, navigation device so I can scroll in and out and zoom, uh, just pan around on this device with my thumb instead of having to use my finger while riding because there was a few close calls when I was standing up riding 100 kilometers an hour chasing Erasmus on his blue T7 on a small trail then using my finger to kind of pan around. Not very clever but I've learned my lesson, now it's time to buy a Bluetooth uh, yeah, device. One thing that I want to end this video with is, and I guess this is, this is not, this is pretty obvious to most of you guys I, I assume, but having a big screen showing uh, the trail, uh, especially when you are riding somewhat fast, chasing this, uh, this guy on his blue T7, knowing the next few corners. I, I don't come from a racing background, so I haven't tried this before, but now with a big screen, understanding or knowing when the turns will come, okay, the, the, the next thir uh, turn will be a very tight one, I have to adjust my speed and be ready for that, that was really useful. So having a screen this big and also the possibility of kind of uh, using it while you are racing or riding fast was a very nice thing. I hope this video was uh, useful. If you have any questions, you know where to, to ask them. And as always, I will see you guys the next time.